Hi. We're in my kitchen. Yay! Yay! This is my friend Trisha Goyer. She, uh, I have so many inspirational things I want to share. This is Trisha's book, The Grumble Free Year. But Trisha has written 75. 75. I've been saying she wrote 60 books, but no, she's written 75 books. I just want to tell your whole story. I'm going to try to paraphrase you it. You can say as much <laughs> as you want. <laughs> this is just such an encouraging thing. So mama's out there with littles. Listen to this. So if I have this right, Trisha homeschooled and raised three biological children. Yes. Followed the God dream. You know, I love God dreams. Followed the God dream flutter in her heart that she could be a writer. So in her early 20s, I think I got you, this. You're like, oh, I got this. I feel, like I feel the Holy Spirit. It's inspirational. <laughs> so in her early 20s, she went at it. She decided she was a writer, and with her small children in tow, she went at it. You went to writing conferences. Mm -hmm. You wrote magazine articles. Yes. And so here she is now with 75 books. They have also, in recent years, adopted seven additional children. So Trisha because is... I had nothing else to do. Nothing to do. <laughs> so she's not. She's a homeschool mom. She's a mom of 10. She has adult children. You have grandchildren. Yes. She's got a... Uh, the youngest is nine. They're doing doing all the things. Every My stage of people. parenting. I guess we're out of the babies and toddlers, though. Right, right. She is out of babies and toddlers. So I, I don't know what that will be like, but it's coming for me. Um, so Trisha has written a new book called The Grumble Free Year. We are going to talk a lot. Here's what I want to know from Trisha. Okay, mamas. I want to talk about grumbling, fault finding, and complaining. Yes. Because when I have kids who grumble, who will remain nameless, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I remind them, hey, kid, the Bible says we should do all things without grumbling, fault finding, and complaining. That's right. I just say that verse a lot, and I don't, I don't have much time to think anything else about it. So teach us things, Trisha. Teach us things. <laughs> teach us things. Uh, I know you all are going to have questions, so you can put your questions in the comments, and I'm sure even Trisha's going to come around and answer them and point, you, yeah. point you to resources. Yeah. So. Okay, so we... Are we talking, am I talking to you? Am I talking to them? I don't know. Talking to... I don't know. <laughs> There's nothing professional going on here. Where, so Trisha, let me tell you this too. So Trisha has come to spend a few days with me, and we are going to do some fun videos like this. We are also cooking up a bunch of grumble-free recipes. Yes. Trisha has something really exciting coming for you as well. We don't know who we're talking. We're going to talk to each other, and we're going to talk to you in some configuration. Because we have so many kids, and we adopted our seven kids from foster care. So there became a lot of um, anger, a lot of struggles. My last book was called Calming Angry Kids. Just I didn't know how to deal from three kids biological with not a lot of anger problems so all of a sudden we have kids with big anger problems so we kind of got past that but there was we found it in our home there's just a lot of grumbling mm -hmm. and a lot of complaining mm -hmm. fault finding we are bringing there's three different sibling sets that yeah. we're bringing together so there was a lot of comparisons just a lot of just ickiness in the house yeah. so my husband and I said we need to do something we need mm -hmm. to stop the grumbling and so we came up with this challenge where let's go a year and try not to grumble mm -hmm. now we knew when we got started that we're not going to be able to go here without right, grumbling. Right, right. <laughs> but we wanted to work on it so we wanted to find it's good things. to have a goal <laughs> yeah we, we wanted to find things that we could do so we started memorizing scripture mm -hmm. started reading bible stories like the Israelites grum grumbling and read all through Exodus and Numbers. Didn't like that manna after a while. <laughs> they, they grumbled and yes. grumbled. And our kids are like, I am so tired of their grumbling. <laughs> so that was really good. Yeah. But there was a lot of things. And then it's hard to figure out, like, how can we make these changes? Right. And so when we got down with the kids, we talked about, okay, how do each of us grumble? Because we didn't want to be policing each other all the time either. Right. Like, you just we us. also get Pharisees. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> so we started out by talking about each person's grumbling style. So okay. like the little girls we tend to whine. Yeah, okay. it has a list in there. Yes. Of our grumbling styles. My older girls will be more condescending on maybe some of the younger kids. Mm -hmm. And then we have the ones that are just doing the eye rolling, the... Would it be? Grumbling styles is, I think, uh, yeah, a couple chapters in the tax. You'll see a whole list of their grumbling styles. I want to see, I want to see yes. grumbling styles here. <laughs> and so we and it just started with a conversation because I said, you know, when we grumble, we need to catch ourselves. And it's not just our words, but sometimes it's rolling our eyes and it's our mm -hmm. attitude. Mm -hmm. And so the girls really saw that, the older girls especially. And then we have, so we have seven girls in a row and then a little guy at the end. So. Seven girls. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of feelings there. And so we mm -hmm. really looked at ourselves. And so once we did that, we wrote it on a whiteboard and it, it was just helped them to see when they started whining, mm -hmm. they realized that's grumbling. Or they started maybe slamming yeah, the cabinet door when they're supposed to be doing yes. chores, that that's part of grumbling too. And so we just went through and did that first. And then as we were going along, I realized like, okay, I'm trying to do all these things with my kids, mm -hmm. but really, I have a lot of grumbling in my heart mm -hmm. because there's a lot of people in the house. It's a lot of noise. It's right. a lot of mess. And going from three kids who were almost adults to all of a sudden in the house full again, yes. it was a little bit overwhelming. Just a little bit going on. Here is the list. So we have mm -hmm. um, complaining was Grace and whining was Alexis and murmuring or muttering was Sissy, mm -hmm. criticizing Anna, which is one of the older ones. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of us, the moaning, like, oh, I sigh all the time, <laughs> I know. and now my kids sigh. Yeah. So, is that yeah? So when you, when you tell them to do yeah, so we, yeah, um, you need to go pick up your shoes. Oh, yeah, that okay. is what we're That's, talking about. I think here. what I do too is like I don't realize I'm doing it, but I think it's a stress relief, almost like a like a breathing exercise. Like, <sighs> but sure. I don't mean anything with it. Okay, I yeah. I just find you're myself trying to doing like get it. control. Yeah, I yeah. think it it's a, a stress relief. But I have kids that do it too, and I, I don't know why they do it. But <laughs> well, so griping. So they all came up with griping. So I'm the okay. one that's walking around. You're leaving your shoes around. You left the wrappers here. You need to do. I this. was just <laughs> doing. Okay, kids, get the Nutrigrain wrappers up. We we got company. <laughs> yeah. Um. So and then so our little guy growls. Okay. So if he's upset. He's like. I have. So, you know, now. they're not like talking back. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking like, I'm not disobeying, but right. growling is the same thing. Right. Um, protesting. So she'll just argue with anything I say. Mm -hmm. I'm Maddie there. Um, fussing. Allie is the little one. She just fusses a lot. And then discontent. And really we realize that all of those outward grumblings is just because mm -hmm. we're discontent. Because we have an idea of what we want. Like I want right. a clean house. My kids want to watch YouTube. Yeah. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. all the different things. Right. And then you want something, but something else, someone, something else is getting in your way, so you're going to grumble and complain about it. So, yeah, that really was kind of the root of where we came from. It's just understanding that all of us do it, um, and no one likes it. Mm -hmm. God doesn't like it, and he, the Israelites didn't go into the Promised Land because they were grumbling. Mm -hmm. And so, um, really looking at our hearts. And at first... It was, okay, we're going to try these things, and we weren't getting very far. <laughs> so yes. then we just, need to go, we just needed to look like, okay, we're trying to stop the grumbling, but what mm -hmm. should we be doing? And it really right. is replacing it with gratitude, being thankful. Yes. Um, and that once we started looking to be thankful, mm -hmm. that started making a big difference with the kids. So when things started changing is mm -hmm. when I realized, like, okay, so we're not, I'm not grumbling at the kids, mm -hmm. but I'm not like nothing's changing because I'm not encouraging them to do the right thing. Okay. So like a big change happened with one of our girls mm -hmm. who every time she went to go do uh, her chores, she was, she would complain or argue with me. Mm -hmm. So I'd say go clean the kitchen and she'd be like, blah, blah. well then she wasn't really doing the grumbling because she's trying to work on that. Right. But you can still see she's not having a happy heart and it's yes. not really changing things. So you're like, something needs to change. So she was in there one day cleaning the kitchen mm -hmm. and she's wiping down the counter. And I'm like, you were doing a fantastic job mm -hmm. wiping down that counter. I'm so thankful that you are really putting time and attention. Well, pretty soon, like that one little corner, she's like, wiping down the Just do it all. Yeah. Because I was praising her. Right. And I was thanking her because, and they, they do say that, like, mom, you always tell us what we're doing wrong, which mm -hmm. is my grumbling. Sure. Instead of telling us what we're doing right. And so the more I caught myself, telling them what, what I think you're doing right and mm -hmm. great job. So then pretty soon that whole day, she spent like 30 minutes just wiping everything Clean, down. Yes. And I'm like, this, <laughs> is, come over. this is amazing. And yes. so now she, it's, you know, a year has passed. She's like the best one in the kitchen. Oh wow. Like her day is Saturday when she has a kitchen. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh good, the kitchen will really get clean. But it started with me praising her okay. and thanking her, being grateful for her. Mm -hmm. Before I'd be like, oh wait, you didn't wipe this part. You didn't. And who wants to go and work for right. somebody or help somebody when they're just going to pick apart what they do? Yeah. So I really, that made a huge difference. Like yeah. realizing like our kids need the respect and they need to know that what they do matters. Mm -hmm. So Trisha also has something in her book. She shares about how, 
how her family used a gratitude jar and made it work for them. So what is a, we've never used one. Okay. The funny thing is, so I've um, seen the free printables for a yes. gratitude jar. The way I did it at first did oh. not work. Okay. <laughs> so and that's how I'll, don't do a gratitude jar this way. Yeah. And then here's then how I'll, you do it. I'll show you how to do it. Okay. So the funny thing is, cause we did this, I knew I was going to write a book cause mm -hmm. I just write books. Yeah. I knew this was going to be a book, so I was like, Where I'm like, track. I'm just going to do a video. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so I was keeping track during the year, like, okay. and, and part of this, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to be a book, because yeah, it's just, not working out. It's kind of messing up. <laughs> yeah, but I would come up with ideas like, okay, let's do this. Let's do a gratitude jar. So my idea was that every time they grumbled, mm -hmm. they had to go write something in the gratitude jar okay. of a gratitude. Okay. Okay, so I thought, this is a great idea. We're like, mm -hmm. turning it around. Well, my daughter, the one that was complaining all the time about mm -hmm. doing her tours, I told her to go do something and she grumbled. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you're going to need to write something for the guy. I don't want to write something for your stupid gratitude jar. Right, right. I'm like, okay, keep it real, sister. <laughs> that is two things you need to write. Uh -huh. And then I'm following her down the stairs and she's grumbling. I'm like, by the time we got to the gratitude jar, right. it was nine things okay. that she was supposed to write. I'm like, nine things. So then things. she's like, right. and just throwing it in there. I'm like, this obviously did not change her attitude. Right. This did not work. We mm -hmm. need to do something different. So instead of trying to like, when they're having a bad attitude, trying to switch, I mean, when you have a bad attitude, do you want someone to come up and say, you need to change be your attitude. Be thankful attitudes. now. Yeah. You need to be thankful now. It's yeah. like, no. When I catch them being thankful about something, mm -hmm. I said, let's put something in the gratitude jar. Okay. Or when we're doing our morning devotions, when mm -hmm. everyone's in a positive attitude, yeah. And we read a scripture and we're thinking like how amazing God is. Let's put something in the gratitude jar. Yeah. So it's in those moments, it's capturing those moments where we're already feeling thankful and then they love it. Then they're putting stuff in. Then later we go and look and I was going to say, remember, how do you pull yeah. them out? Do so then later, like and it's really not, we have it. I mean, you could do it like every month. And sure. But basically when we see it getting full, mm -hmm. let's see what's in there. Oh, that's and so fun. like, oh, I got that new pair of shoes, mm -hmm. you know, or I started basketball and I met a new friend. So because if you had 50 pieces of paper in front of you all with thankfulness and you read them all, you would be feeling a lot different by the time you were. You remember, yes, the you things remember that you all the things and for. the things that the Lord has done and that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can wonderful. see different people's handwriting yes. and the things that they're grateful for. So, so we've that's done that. how you used it for your family. Yeah, that's how yeah. we used it for our family. Oh, that's wonderful. I want to do that. I should do that. <laughs> that's wonderful. Don't, and do then, the, don't do it the way I first did. Right. You need to catch the thankfulness catch and the then thankfulness. load it up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they would love that. I think, and you probably found this with your kids too, I, I can think of a few children who would purposely just go around saying things they're thankful for to write more for the gratitude jar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like I could see Amelia like, but there's five things I need to write them down. <laughs> yeah. And pretty much every day with one of my kids was like the dog. Right. The dog was in there multiple <laughs> times in his same hand. First of all, he could spell that word. Right. And then, you know, he just loves the dog. Yeah, so. that's right. That's right. We love the dog. Um, and then you had mentioned earlier to me, but the, our friends on YouTube don't know. You all had, of course, during this year, when you think mm -hmm. this is the year we're gonna we're gonna quit grumbling, you had a huge event happen yes. that was not expected. Right. So, listen to what Trisha <laughs> dealt with. <laughs> so we have our kids, our seven kids living at in the home, and then my husband and I, and also my grandma mm -hmm. um, is 90 now, and she lives there too. And so we've been taking care of her for 20 years and she's just plugged along. She's yeah, just been great. One of the kids. Well, just a couple <laughs> months after we, we were in this, she mm -hmm. fell and broke her back. Yeah. We were Thanksgiving morning. We were all getting ready to go for the day mm -hmm. and we hear a crash and oh. call the EMT. Well, it ends up she has a broken back and she's hospitalized and they want to send her to a rehabilitation hospital. Mm -hmm. Like we just need to bring her home. Like she was disoriented. She didn't know where she was. Yeah. She has dementia too. So that's a struggle. So we brought her home and we're mm -hmm. caring for her. Well, because she has dementia, she didn't remember that she broke her oh. back. So in the morning we'd hear her trying to get out of bed. So I'd put an alarm by her bed. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of this, I'm like, I don't have time to think about this you no know, grumbling thing. I'm just in survival mode, taking care right. of her. And thinking, okay, we'll just have to think about that uh, grumble-free thing later. Right. But really, as I, we were going through it, I realized like the kids were helping. Because mm -hmm. they saw I needed help with grandma. They were going sure. in there. They were checking on her. They were taking her food. Yeah. It was just like caring for another person. It made us naturally grateful that we mm -hmm. still had her, that she was okay. Right. But and then, she could come home. And she could come home and yeah. she was with us. Um, but she couldn't remember that she broke her back, but we would hear her, our homeschool room is in our dining room, it's right mm -hmm. next to her bedroom, praising Jesus. Oh. She would just sing songs of praise yeah. and hymns, 
and the kids I'm like, I, I remember sitting around the table and we all paused to listen I said we grumble about the weather or about mm -hmm. we don't like what, the clothes we have to wear or whatever right and she has a broken back and she's praising Jesus and yeah. she became a Christian when I was in second grade so she okay. didn't even grow up in a Christian home right but she loves God and just loves singing to him mm -hmm. and praying and so even though she couldn't remember breaking her back, right. she remembered to praise Jesus. Right. And I think it just reminded my kids, like the more we do something, mm -hmm. it is hardwired in us. Yes. Because she was hardwired to praise, and she mm -hmm. didn't grumble. Like, right. she, she didn't wasn't in there grumbling and complaining that she couldn't get out of bed. Mm -hmm. um, she was praising God. And just all of my kids were like, okay, we need to be more like grandma. Yeah. And so, That's even right. though it was totally unexpected, mm -hmm. it ended up being such a good thing for our kids to witness right. her. And serve. Yeah. And, and serving yeah, her, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and gets there since um, they have all kinds of history that they came from as well. Mm -hmm. Gets their mind off to onto something someone else is going through. Yeah, and helping grandma get through that. Yeah, and even yeah. my grandma's story because my kids love to talk to her about it because she lived in a boxcar. Oh. Her yeah, so her parents were immigrants from Mexico, mm -hmm. um, and she was born in California. But they lived in a boxcar. Her dad had turned a boxcar into a little house, and they had their bed, and the kids had a trundle bed. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, you hear about this in books. You know, the yes, boxcar. I know. Project. I'm like, oh, Trisha, write this novel. Yes, <laughs> but that was her life. That's and she talks about. Yeah. So every time they complain, she's like, I only had one dress, and really, yes. she only had one dress. So we'll, we'll, we'll share grandma's story. So my mom's mom, my. Excuse me. My grandparents had my mom in their 40s, and they were settled by then. Mm -hmm. But in their early married life, when they had three children, um, my grand my grandma lived in a chicken coop, oh, wow. <laughs> pretty much, with three children. And the neighbors knew that they were struggling, mm -hmm. and they'd bring them over like bread and jam uh, and different wow. things like that. But yeah, they lived in a chicken coop. So it's just, but those were those times then. Yeah. yeah. And it was a hard so. time, the Great Depression, and she yes. tells the stories. My grandpa um, was in Kansas and then lost their farm from the mm -hmm. Dust Bowl and moved to California. I mean, all these stories, but to have my grandma sitting there telling them the stories, yes, it does, it means wonderful. a lot. So Trisha's book, The Grumble Free Year, is available now. You can get it. You can look in the description below and I'll have all kinds of information there for you. You can get the book and read it. I know I'm going to read it and I'm gonna take notes and I'll be sharing more about it over in my Insta stories. But I also wanted Trisha to give us, like, you're a mama, you're watching this, you need help with grumbling today. Yes. So help me today, help these mamas today. Before we can read your book, what do we do, Trisha? Yeah. Well, I think the first <laughs> so, thing we need to do is, uh, well, first of all, look at our own hearts. And mm -hmm. it yeah. really, and I think it goes back to unfulfilled expectations. Yes. Like, we expect things to go a certain way, and when they don't, we grumble. And so, first of all, when I catch myself, it's like, what am I expecting in this moment? Mm -hmm. And is it realistic? Because most right. of the time, like, getting everyone out the door at church, you know, mm -hmm. everyone's shoes and everybody, you know, yeah. it's like unrealistic unless I figure out ahead of time what I'm going to do, what I'm going right. to prepare. So when I find myself worked up, realizing, like, you know what, this is life. These are kids. Mm -hmm. my, my ideas are un unrealistic. Like, we cannot fulfill this. I, I feel, I was telling Trisha earlier, I feel like... And this is like old goat mama stuff. So if you're a young mama and you don't feel this way, it comes. <laughs> but I feel like, like I just live my life in a position of surrender. Yeah. I don't do it perfectly yeah. at all. Jesus helps me. But so many of you moms want to know, you know, Jamerell, how do you do this? Or how do you handle that? Or how are you always happy? Or what, whatever you, whatever you think. Mm -hmm. I just really feel like all day, every day, it's just surrendering back to the Lord. Yeah. So. Let's all work on that. Yeah, so I think that's, uh, <laughs> and that's I forget. Start with us. Yeah. Yes, because then if I'm I'm tangled up or we're running late or whatever, and then I'm like, okay, Jamerell, it's because you're not you're not fully surrendered to this day. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So know that so, things are going to happen. Yeah, and check, things check are going to happen. And then also when we catch our kids doing something, like mm -hmm. I mentioned before, if it's the smallest thing. Thank them and praise them for it. Mm -hmm. They'll want to do that more. Yes. And they feel connected with us. Because I know if I'm the mom that's grumbling and every time they see me, I'm like complaining about something, mm -hmm. they're not going to want to spend time with me. We're right. not going to build a relationship. And the coolest thing now with our three adult kids mm -hmm. is have great relationships with them. Yeah. Um, they love See, Trisha made it. Yeah. yeah. We, they're, they're adults. <laughs> yeah. They are. They have jobs. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Went to college. Did all kinds of great things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. They, they actually do it. Yes. And we have that relationship. Yes. And wonderful. so it is. It, it's, it's like 
fill in my lips because mm -hmm. of course I could see all the stuff they could fix. Sure. But really just praising them when they do the right things makes a huge difference. And then they want to spend time with you and do stuff with you right. and connect with you. Um, so it's even more than just not grumbling. It's building that relationship. Right, going after their hearts. Yes. Right, and all that. And yes. then the, the gratitude jar, like mm -hmm. catching, catching being thankful just in everyday I life. I to do that. That's, yeah. see, if, um, it doesn't feel overwhelming to me to yeah. try to do that. Sometimes these things that we should do or the list of things we should be doing, it's very burdensome. Yes. But if it's all, it's also something the kids can do independently. Yes, they can. I just need to get a jar. Yeah. I draw little slips of paper. Little slips of paper. And you can even tie little, little string oh, so the yes. pencil stays by it. Uh -huh. Otherwise you're looking for a pencil. <laughs> we'll be grumbling about the pencil. Where did my pencil go? When you spend time with older people or other people, just hearing oh, their stories. Yes. Hearing their stories. Like my grandma, um, we love hearing her stories of mm -hmm. the Great Depression. I mean, we have friends from church. One uh, friend grew up in Venezuela. So it's just like, oh, wow. tell us about your life. And yeah. I mean, when they get a, a view of other people and their mm -hmm. experiences, like we have so much, like we've right. been given so much. Right. And, um, it's a lot just of people, a pencil sharpener, Jamie. Yeah. Well, you okay. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people have gone yeah. through hard stuff, so I yes. think that really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And then, well, life is precious. When we were doing this near the end, um, my husband went in for a routine colonoscopy mm -hmm. and ended up like his heart stopped on the table and they had to resuscitate him. Word. And they oh, had to, that? that was a year, a year and a half ago. So yeah. Sorry. On the day, yes. so he's hospitalized. Well, I go to pick him up. So I'm, I had a riding day planned. All my kids had camps right, during that day. Of course, yes. <laughs> All my kids had camps during that day. I'm like, I'm gonna have a day to write. And right. my husband's like, I'm having a colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. our, our oldest son was gonna drop him off. I need you to pick me up. And I'm like. I had a writing day plan. Like right. it was my mama day that right. I don't have I all your hard. Yeah. So I'm you know kind of grumbling, but you know, trying to be positive. I'll mm -hmm. still have the rest of the afternoon. I get there and the doctor's waiting for me in the waiting room yes. and his heart stopped during a routine colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. They had to resuscitate him. Wow. And then he well, I won't go into more details. Mm -hmm. He ended up in the hospital for five days. Wow. Um, and so it's just like realizing all At the little moment. stuff that we grumble about yeah. and complain about and we're trying to overcome this, like I could have lost him, you know. Yes. So it's just realized that life is precious and just look at the bigger picture mm -hmm. instead of all these little things that we just have our attitudes like yeah. down because of. In addition to Trisha's new book coming out this week, will this make 76 now? Do you know? Or yeah, that's, 75? Seven, that's 76. 76 books. Okay. Kind of a big deal here. Trisha has written a free book just for you. So if you look down in the description below, I will also have it linked in the first comment. You can click through that and get her brand new free book. Trisha has over 30 years experience being a mama. So she's already done multiple times, all the ages, all the stages, and she's doing it all again. It was that much fun. So you need to get her free ebook because it has a lot of insights into motherhood, tons of practical organization tips. She even has some grumble free recipes in there and we're all about easy grumble free exactly. recipes. So you need to click through and get that free book now because it's amazing. She did it for us. She did it for you. So in addition to the grumble free year, which we're gonna all work on that, myself included, Looking back at your motherhood journey, if like with the mamas out here who have kids all ages stages, give us two or three things to help us enjoy our motherhood journey. Okay, so one of the things that actually came from trauma counseling with the kids. Okay. okay. So, but it works with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to discipline my kids to get mm -hmm. them to behave right. I mean, right. that's what we do. That's right, what we right, teach right. them. The therapist said, I need you to spend 10 minutes a day with this mm -hmm. child. And so first it was the two and a half year old who was destructive and tantrums and stuff. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes a day, just focusing on him mm -hmm. and focusing on um, what he's doing. So we, we'd have a little time in our in his room mm -hmm. with his special toys that we'd only use during that time. And I would, I would praise him, mm -hmm. like great job lining up those cars. I would have complete attention on him. If he mm -hmm. said something, I repeated it. So he knew for that 10 minutes, it was just about him. Okay. Um, later with my teen, she had me do a different Counselor had me do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So let's go paint each other's nails and let's go run an errand and get a smoothie. It was just that 10 minutes a day. And you know, when we have a lot of kids, right, right. it's a lot hard Because 10 minutes doesn't sound like a lot. Like a lot of people are probably saying 10 minutes, but right. when you have a lot of kids, when you have a lot, if you can do that 10 minute focus mm -hmm. time, because so, you have big family time. Right. All the time. I mean, we're, yeah. we're with each other yeah. all the time. Right. So what I try to do is if I see a kid that 
is acting up. They just don't, they seem out of sorts. Mm -hmm. I know that's the kid today that I need to spend that 10 minutes with. Yes. And so I will think like, hey, I'm gonna run here. You wanna go with me? Mm -hmm. We could go pick out some special dessert tonight. Yeah. And, and it just doesn't have to be a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Just for them to know that you are noticing them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think so many times when they have a bad mood or something, we're like, you need to calm down, you need to go to your room, instead of drawing close to them. And so yes. I think that has really, just spending okay. that time, seeing the kid and realizing they need something right now, mm -hmm. and drawing close, because it gets easy like to get on them. Sure. So that would be one thing. And then I think um, overall, understanding like different kids, um, just, so, just the way they get love or feel love is mm -hmm. a different way. So those love languages. Mm -hmm. So some kids. Want, I've still never read that book. Some kids want the time, but <laughs> yeah. some kids just need praise. Like some right. kids, or, or some kids want. Like if you pick up a pack of gum at the store for them. Mm -hmm. So just think about different kids. Your different kids too. Like today, what was one little thing? Mm -hmm. It could take ten seconds that would make this child feel special. Right. And and do that. And so if it's. Um, one of my girls likes to draw, and I'll say, what are you drawing? Like, I just know, like, in my mind, I kind of go through my kids mm -hmm. and thinking, I'm gonna notice when she's drawing today, I'm gonna pause and go over and look at that. Mm -hmm. So again, it is about, like, focusing on them and how they receive love, or what yes. would be meaningful for them is really important. That's good. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Anything else? Well, and then also, just um, taking time with God's Word with them. And so, Very you know, important. when we start our homeschool, and you, know, mm -hmm. you don't have to homeschool, you can do anything. You know, right, right. But just spend that time in God's Word. Because mm -hmm. I think so many times we want to prepare our kids for the future. So we're teaching mm -hmm. them how to budget, how to shop, and how to cook, and all these things. But like God's Word has what they're going to need. Right. And um, even when we first adopted kids, we'd have this time before our homeschool, and like, why is this important? We need to know, do our math. And I said, this is going to give you the answers for everything in life. So right. just reading a scripture together, mm -hmm. um, putting you know little songs on, singing those together, anytime you could read. Do worship music on YouTube worship all music. the time. <laughs> yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're doing a Bible study in Daniel together. I was gonna ask, so mm -hmm. because mamas will probably ask too, yes. how you set up your devotion time. What I find myself doing a lot is like starting in Genesis or starting in John and we read through. Mm -hmm. But do you do that or do you look for specific? So we've done different things at okay. different times. And I think that's okay. Like sometimes oh, yeah. no, something no will work. And so yeah. right now we're doing, it's actually community Bible study. Okay. And so community Bible study, we go there on Wednesdays oh, wow. and it's non-denominational. So people mm -hmm. from all different churches come or women mm -hmm. from all different churches. And they actually have homeschool classes for my kids. Oh, so my kids get to go there, mm -hmm. but we all have homework. And so we're going okay. to the book of Daniel. So the older teen girls and I all have the same homework. Mm -hmm. So I sit down with them, we read the passage, I love it. we look up the Bible verses, <laughs> uh -huh. and the little kids have the same homework, but it's just easier. It's more like yeah. a crossword to go yes. with this. So that's, but it's, we're mm -hmm. all studying Daniel together. And so it's easy when we're in the car, when we talk about mm -hmm. something, we're all on the same page. That's so in the past before that, we have picked a book of the Bible that we've right. run through. Um, like I said, when we were doing the Grumble for a year, we did Exodus and Numbers, which no. <laughs> like, we are so tired of this. Right. Um, or we we also read the YWAM, which is mm -hmm. Youth with the Mission, missionary books. We yes. love those. That might be the ones I have out here. Hold you on, do. I, I saw do. them okay, on okay. your shelf. <laughs> so they're Youth with the Mission, and I actually um, interviewed the authors on my podcast. Oh, I love it. So they are awesome. And and they're missionaries and people <laughs> in history that um, just live amazing lives. And I think it helps our kids. Yeah, we, that's our so, favorite. I was going to say, <laughs> <laughs> this, this I, I think we might have read it 10 times. <laughs> yeah. If you want to start any of these, mm -hmm. this one, Amy Carmichael is, I mean, there are, oh, I have two Cameron Towns. I need, when I find double books, I pass them off. Well, we haven't read this one yet because this is in our homeschool for this year. Okay. Um, but all these we have. Read. Yeah, they're just, so and I saw. We love it. Um, homeschool mom talk. Have you seen at the conventions where they have all of them? Yes. Or do you have them all? Okay. Because I need we them do, all. We don't have them all, but this okay. is the story behind that. Uh -huh. So we were looking at them, and my little nine-year-old, I said, go pick out one, a new missionary book. Mm -hmm. So she was going up, so they're all like here, and she was going like this. And she was looking at the top. Uh huh. And she was seeing the size. And I said, <laughs> why are you doing that? She goes, I need a thick one. I said, okay. She says, because if they're too thin, they die quickly. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So that is our, uh, yes. yes. Oh, that's great. But yeah, these are wonderful. Yeah. 
ones. They're, so. they're great. So we'll do that. I mean, mm -hmm. just, and we also do prayer journals oh, where we cool. will have prayer journals, mm -hmm. um, actually like created some prayer journals for the kids. So okay. it's called Mommy and Me Prayer. So they write their prayer and do I write a prayer. Prayers? I do. Okay. okay. Yes. Mommy and Me Prayers. How do you sell them? Where on they? Amazon. On Amazon. Okay. Those will be linked below. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, if you don't sell those, you should sell those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have all the Trisha links. There we go. <laughs> and so yeah. basically they would, they write a prayer and then I write a prayer because oh, it's wow. so cute. We kept the little journals mm -hmm. when they were little, like their handwriting, you can't hardly read what they're saying, yeah. like things they're thankful for or their mm -hmm. prayer requests. And they love having that. But I thought, wouldn't it be great if there was a way I can write something for them. So I just yeah. want to like, thank you for um, Buddy's creativity and mm -hmm. the way he just cares it's for his wonderful. siblings. And so then not only does he have his little scribbles, mm -hmm. he has my prayers for him too. Yeah. But it, even if it takes 10 minutes, 15 right. minutes, just spending that time with them, because mm -hmm. now I have adult kids. Right. I mean, it's to see them serving God and then they have kids. Mm -hmm. So my grandkids, you know, seeing them do the same things yes. with them. Yes. Um, my grandkids are like eight and six. Oh, and wow. so, you know, to see my son mm -hmm. spending time reading the same books and yep. doing the same little things with them, it just knows that like, it seems in our days when we're busy that that's the thing that kind of gets pushed. But right. make time for that. Like, leave the kitchen dirty, right. <laughs> but spend time. Mm -hmm. In the we Bible. leave the dishes in the sink all the time. Yeah, yeah, it makes a difference. So, as I said, we were gonna chat in the comments below. Trisha will show up in the comments. Below. I will. And don't forget to check the first link in the description so you can get a free book from Trisha as well. And we'll see you next time with another brand new video. Bye bye.